um, this is Steve again. I just want to show you an example of how to create uh, sprites from an SME language level. And we're going to be working off of an example I've already got typed in here. I'll kind of go over and explain some of that code to you. And I'll show you the example that I'm using this from. So, let's get started. Okay, so everything is being taken from the website that I have for basic graphics. And um, this is an example here that I had from my disk called my first four color sprite. We're going to reproduce this with this assembly code. Uh, first thing we needed to do, which I've already done here, is you wanted to type in the sprite data. So let me explain that for you here. These lines right here, or this line right here, this is going to read in the sprite data from 896 to 958. That's a safe place to store the sprites. And read SP just means read the data statements below this line, because the read is always going to read directly below unless you pretty much tell it where to read from. And it's going to poke in from in, from this location, from the, the sprite data. So let's look at that here. So if you look at these lines, 1500 to 1590, that's a duplicate of these lines right here, you see? Hopefully you can see this, so I'm going to just overload it if you can't. So all these sprite data is what's going to draw the image. Now what we're going to concentrate on is, is this bottom part. It's really simple. This line and this line right here, we're going to reproduce this from a semi-language standpoint. Now how is that done? Well, hopefully very easily. First line, we're actually going to reproduce everything here. So the first line here shows a print heart. That means to clear the screen, and that's what this routine right here is doing. So let me break that down and show you from the semi-language level. Make some room here. Okay, so we're going to make some room over here. Uh, I think that should be good. And the first thing we're going to do is load the QMF 147. Now, if you follow my previous examples, make sure you pull up that um, Atari document again. I can pull it up here real quick if you want to see it again. This one right here. I'm not going to go to it in a lot because my video will go over otherwise. It's right here. So we're going to be looking up these opcodes. And we already know 169 is the, the opcode for load the accumulator immediate value. Which is up here somewhere. Or down here I think. So we've already went over that. Watch the first video if you need to go over that. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to clear the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these next few lines. Now I'm going to need to pull up the opcode so I can stay consistent with what I've been doing. So what you want to do is you want to look up the opcode for 32, and you'll see here it says JSR AAAA or JSR high in the low byte or the memory addressing or the absolute value. Excuse me, the absolute addressing area. So this is basically taking two bytes. And this is one, I'm saying two, I'm sorry, three. One, two, three. So you separate these A's and the highs and the low, like this two A's would be the low and this would be the high. And that counts one, two, three. And that's how you know you're going to have three bytes or three data statements. And we already know that's GSR. So over here we're going to the next line. And I'll type that in. GSR. Now we don't know what this 210 and 255 is yet, so we'll, we'll need to calculate that down here. I've showed this before, but I'll show it again. So you take 210, and find the plus, plus 255, times 256, equals 65490. And I could probably show you in a really book really quick here. Let me just pull that up. I didn't have that part ready, sorry guys. 65490 at the bottom here. So, so look down here at the bottom. We'll find it. Take a second. This camera takes a second to focus. Sorry. Right there. 65490 CHR out. This is output a character. So basically, that's going to output the XC character for a print screen. And that's how you, that's the trick I do to, to erase the screen. Which is basically doing this 1300 line. That's what those two statements are doing. So let's go back to our listing and finish it. So 
65490. And then we're back to this again. And I'm just going to just convert it this again. Why it wants to do that all the time. And this is going to be logic came out of immediate value of 14. And then we're going to need to convert these values. So 248 comma 7. We'll do it down here again just to kind of show you. You can get a habit of doing your own like this to kind of get used to it. What is it? 248 plus 7 times 256 or 2040, which would be our next line. 2040. So we're going to store in location 2040. And then the next line is, to, is going to be just one more from this. So you do basically just add one more to the value or 2041. Which is exactly what we got over here. Called 2040-41 or load the cumulative immediate value. Remember this 14 is just representing this area right there. So this immediate value is always representing this area. Easiest just want to look at it from a poke statement. And the store is representing the poke to store it somewhere. The poke does the same thing, it stores in a memory location. And then you just say it whatever that memory location is. So it's gonna be a very simple example. But I wanted to show people from a very, you know, basic level, kind of move it up. We'll move into some more maybe animations and stuff like that later. So anyway. The next line here, I'll convert this to show you. I already know what they're gonna do, but I just wanted to show you. I want you to get in the habit of doing this yourself. So zero plus two oh eight times 256, or 53, 248, which is the horizontal position for our spike. So 53, 248. And the next line is 129. And if you look down here, you'll see I'm consistent. So basically right now, we just reproduce um, this line right down here. This right here is just storing it in memory. It's just used to store it. And I just um, basically just poked it in here. That's all we're basically doing. There's a way to do it from the same language, but we're just doing it from the poke standpoint. So we got that. And then we're going to look to the next line here. So we're going to say VI or 53248 plus 1, which would be 53249 comma 129. Or poke 53249 comma 129. Or, let it keep a immediate value of 129, store it in 53249. And that's how you get the, the poke for that. Next one would be Vic plus 2 comma 160 and I'm so hoping you guys can see this screen. I'm going to move it over a little bit more just to be safe. I'm going to move this over a little bit because I know the way this camera captures it kind of screws things up sometimes. I want to be fair. I hope you can see the screen. Okay so store it. So we're saying 2 comma 2 8. Remember this right here was 1 comma 2 8 53 2 49. So this goes 53 2 48 or 0 and then you add 1 to it 53 2 49. You add 2 to it and you got 53, 250. Which is exactly what this line is doing right here. It's just calculating off of this. Okay, so the next thing here is 169. Or 69, excuse me. So it's this line down here, which you see what they're doing here. The horizontal position, vertical, sprite number one, high pointer, uh, Vic pointers. Um, those are different. I think those are different sprites combined, if I'm not mistaken here. I think mean, it has multiple sprites on this guy. So 69, store it, 3. So once again, we're adding another one, so or 53, 251. So now we finished all all these lines right here. So you load the cumulus 69, 69, immediate value, store it, and 53, 251, or VI, 53, 248. Just add it, 48, 49, 50, 51, and you get that. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And we got let it give it a mean value of three. Right here. And this one is store twenty-three comma two oh eight. Or again we're just adding um, twenty-three to that location. And I did that wrong, I just <laughs> let me go ahead and calculate that one since I don't know what that value will be anyway. So twenty-three plus 208 times 256 is 53271. There we go. So 53271. There we go. And then 29, we can do the same thing again. Calculate it. 53277. So, 
store, 5377. Now this, this one is just one byte less than this one, so it's going to just be the next value from behind, 53276. And then this one is load immediate value of zero. And then right now, we just finished these lines. So you see the three here? We did this one. We got 23,28, which is this one. 29,28, which is this one. And then we're on to this one right here, zero, and for 33. And what is 33? 53,281. So we're on the 53,281. What you can see what they are here, which is why I really like this example and why it shows it, because it actually tells you what each line is doing. So this one is the background black. So it's the background sprite black color. So let me make sure that these are in here. We're on to the next line down here. And this is the multicolor number zero for yellow. So this is the color yellow, which is six. And then we're going to store it in that multicolor location. And then I'll have to convert it down here. Not the greatest with math, guys. Never my favorite subject. Okay, so we got 53285. Now we're going to be on to the next line down here. So we just basically did this line right here. We did 37, 6, so we set the multicolor. Now we're on to the load cumulative number 2, or sprite number 1 red, this line. And we'll store it back in 39. We know it's just two more up from the 37 here, so we just add two more to this, and we get 53287. Just not need to list the rest of the lines. Looks good. Okay, so now we're on to the next line down here. Multicolor number one blue. So this is a sprite blue. Oops, I skipped one here. Okay, so this is um, another location. 40 is a red color. So this is the red multicolor. Or 53288. And this is one keyword number seven. And then this one. It's 38 comma 28. If you look at this one, it's 40. This one is 39, so just subtract one from this and you got 53 to 86. If you don't believe me, oops. If you um, want to be sure, you can always use your calculation, remember. So remember, you just take the high number byte and multiply them together. And you got 53 to 86. That's how you know it's correct. And then we got I'll give you number three. And the final one, I will recalculate that to show you. It's 53269, which enables the sprite. If you look over here, this is the final line. I know it went kind of fast, but this one was the red right here. Just look, remember, always look at this new media value, and you look at the second part here, and you'll know that that parameter stands for that position. So, so this is like saying, poke, store, store, um, this location, whatever this location would be, 40. Okay, let's do it this way. Store 53288 or poke 53288, 2. Store 53288, 2 or load the meaning value of 2 and store it into that memory location. So that's how that works. 53269. Now I typed in the data statements earlier so that nothing would crash or anything. So. They're all done, they're all done up here. So basically you just duplicate what you put down here and put it back up there. This is for people who don't have an assembler and I just do it this way to show you an easier way to do a semi language. So so we got this so far. I'm gonna stick a line in here so we can kind of see our data statements better. So that's what we got. Now, for those who uh, may have missed or if you wanna watch the first video, you can. I don't like to kind of I can't type that in. I don't like to kind of repeat stuff here, but this right here is just reading in all these bytes here. So if you count all these bytes from starting at zero, there should be 72. And always remember you got to end with the, the RTS or the 96. I don't know if I ever showed that in the video, but or on here, but I'll show it real quick. If you look up 96 or on here, you'll see it says RTS. Retur RTS will return it back to basic, basically. So that's basically how that works. So I'm going to add in that last line here. So I think we got everything we need. And this is pokes in the memory location. X reads from BY. So it's reading each of these bytes. And I did show that if you watch the first video or even the second video, we will demonstrate that. But that's what basically is going on. I'm going to save this to make sure it doesn't, in case it crashes. But I ran it earlier, so I know it won't crash. 
I figured typing them in, making sure they work first would be a good idea. And then just going back and just throwing in the, the statements for people. Hopefully they'll be able to learn from that level. Now that we don't, things aren't repetitive. You people like repetitive stuff. Okay, so now if you look at this whole program, and let me go back to this example here again. And you look at this, you'll notice that these are all in pokes. And then you have data statements. And of course you have, um, if you look at this whole example, you have no assembly language at all in this. But behind scenes, the computer is actually doing this in assembly language. We just don't know it. So if you look at this program, you can see it's all, except for the for statement and the system remarks, stuff like that, it's all basically in assembly language. Or machine language. I, I get stuck saying assembly language. Just for those guys who want to know, this is the assembly language when you type in the, the opcodes. And uh, machine language is the numbers. These are the numbers, so this is the machine language. Okay, so you can see it's all, except for this too, this is um, poking, you know, basically you could technically say that it's still assembly language. So it's basically all working from a high level language. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. And you should see this screen right here, something similar to this. And also it will clear the screen. I won't have to clear it. And let's look again at the example just to show you. I'm not cheating. There's no print clear screen in here anywhere. It's all done from the assembly language level. With the design you can see for yourself. There's nothing hidden in here to try to magically clear the screen. It's only done in the bytes. So it'll clear the screen. If I've done it successfully, it should show the bytes. There it goes. So, guys, hope you enjoyed this uh, very simple demo. I just want to kind of start making these very simple so I can get more videos out there and, and take it, you know, step by step for people to learn. And plus my videos have to be short because they get cut off anyway. So thanks for watching guys. Subscribe if you like this. Might take me a second for how to stop this. <laughs>